So, inshallah, we're going to start. Alhamdulillah, min al-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, today we will be learning ayat number 90 and 91 of Surah An-Naml. <coughs> inshallah, we will do a brief translation first. The first ayat, uh, 90, is still about the hereafter. So, will apply the, the rules accordingly. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in ayat number 90, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَنْ جَاءَ So whosoever comes, and here the coming is on the day of judgment. بِسَيِّعَاتِ With evil deed, which means when he has done the evil and bad deeds in the worldly life, when he comes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a person like him that he is appearing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while his deeds are bad deeds. So what will happen to him? <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكُبَّتْ وُجُوهُهُمْ He will be thrown on his faces. Or such people will be thrown on their faces in the fire, in the fire of hell. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> puts out a question to the people who have been paid this way. Hal tujuzawna, is it that you have been paid or you have been recompensed? Illa ma kuntum ta'amaloon, except what you had been doing in the worldly life. So what you were, whatever you were doing, you have been paid. And obviously this is a question and the answer will be yes. <coughs> then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> in the next ayat 91 is mentioning something that he is commanding that Prophet ﷺ say something. Innama umirto, only I have been commanded. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet ﷺ to make a statement saying that I have been commanded. An abuda that I should be worshipping. Rabba the Lord. Hazihil Baldati, the Lord of this city, this city that I am, I am living, and the Lord of this city is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I have been commanded that I should worship Him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further mentions Allah the Harramaha. He is the one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has made this city, this town, is a sacred town. A respectable ihtiram, all these words will apply. Walahu and belong to him, belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu shay'in, everything. Then again, wa umirto, and then the Prophet further say, I have been commanded, I have been ordered, ana akuna, that I should be minal muslimin, among those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are basically two different ayats. One talks about the hereafter and one talks about the worldly life. So this second ayat is Prophet Sallallahu Then anybody can claim or apply this ayat on himself by saying, I have been commanded by my Lord that I should worship him. So it should apply to the followers or those who believe in the Quran and the message of Allah that they should take this upon themselves that they will be submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have been commanded to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with that, inshallah, we'll go to the beginning and do a breakdown of the word <coughs> here. The first ayat starts with the word waman. So, there are simple words in there, but just some uh, explanation. Wow, ayat starts with the word and, 
एंड मन इज ए शर्त या स्टेटमेंट इट मीन्स हु एवर सो स्टेटमेंट इज गोइंग दैट हु एवर वुड डू समथिंग वट विल ही अचीव बाई डूइंग समथिंग सो दिस वर्ल्ड इज ए शर्त या इज ए कंडीशनल स्टेटमेंट एंड द मीनिंग इज दैट हु एवर ओके then <clears throat> the next word starts with these three letters jim alif and hamza okay the meaning of this is to come okay now grammatically when we put three zabars or three fathas on this thing it becomes ja a also in some places you will see that the root letters will be ya okay but again this changes anyway so this middle letter changes into the sound of alif and the word becomes ja and hamza ja a this is the grammar of third person he and past tense he came literally this is the first meaning now hamza whenever there is a hamza and there is an alif before that in the tajweed in the recitation we prolong the sound of alif and we add a mad on that so the word is ja a he came but man is there before that so this he will go away and the sentence will become whoever came the literal meaning is that and whoever came or has come but the rule of hereafter when we use the past tense grammar for the day of judgment then we do not translate as the past tense we translate will come or comes so the meaning will be waman ja a and whoever comes or will come <clears throat> now this coming is in front of allah subhanahu wa taala after the resurrection has taken place then allah subhanahu wa taala says what is the condition what is the state of this person who is appearing in front of allah subhanahu wa taala on the day of judgment <clears throat> so these are the two words uh, they are ha seen and noon this means to do good and the opposite word of this is seen waw and hamza <clears throat> these three letters and the meaning is to do bad so these are the two opposite words for each other If somebody is doing good thing we use ha seen noon somebody is doing bad we use seen waw and hamza so the a good activity is made this way hasa we combine these three letters ha sa na and put a round ta at the end hasanatun hasanatun is a good deed so this is a noun and this is the action a good deed is called hasanatun compared to that a bad deed is called sayyatun so this is pronounced as sayyi a tun sayyatun means a bad deed so these are in many places in come in the quran comparing to each other a good deed is a hasanatun a bad deed is sayyatun so here we are with the quran in this ayat is using this word sayyatun so let's ponder on this word sayyatun is a bad deed <clears throat> so first thing we do we put an al before that what does al do it changes a to da so this becomes the bad deed but al does couple other things whenever we put al before that 
it removes one dhamma or one page from the last letter so it becomes sayyatu <coughs> when you read them together you have a lam and you have a seen after that <coughs> seen is a letter that kills the sound of lam and doubles up its own sound so sound of lam is gone so you don't say al anymore and you say as as sayyatu that is the word as sayyatu means the bad deed the bad action then we are going to put a letter b before that b means with and b is a harf jar which means it's a preposition preposition has action on the noun that it looks at the last letter and change page or dhamma to a kasra now when you recite combine ba with the seen you do not pronounce anything in between it becomes bis sayyati that's the word in the quran with the bad deed waman jaa and who ever comes in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment with bad deed which means his book of deeds is filled with the wrong things bad things which he did in this worldly life so that's a conditional statement so what will happen to such a person allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the word fa qubbat so let's understand that fa is separate here fa means so and that means this is the reply so what will happen to such a person whoever comes okay the next part of this word is starts with these three letters kaf ba and ba ka ba ba the meaning of these three letters is to throw or throw down you take something throw it down that is ka ba ba to throw <coughs> down now let's start building this word here if i put three zabars of three fatas this brings the grammar of the past tense and third person <clears throat> so kababa will mean he third person someone threw something down okay past tense threw down Okay now we are going to make more changes here first of all two similar letters ba ba can be written with the shadda so this will be written kabba it will be pronounced not kabba ba but kabba so the word kabba means some person threw something down okay now one rule the next rule is that if i take the first letter which is kaf here that has a zabar or fataha if i change this to a page or dhamma it becomes kubba how the meaning changes it became passive voice kubba means he threw down active voice passive voice is that he was thrown down that is a passive so meaning so far will be he was thrown down now we are going to do more with that somebody was thrown down okay now if i put a ta at the end of this three letters it will become the feminine grammar so just by adding a ta this became instead of he it became she so kubbat if you pronounce this kubbat means she was thrown down okay <clears throat> now because we are talking about the hereafter as i said the past tense grammar is translated into the future tense so the meaning will be she will be thrown down still passive but a uh, future tense so the word is kubbat five separate so kubbat she will be uh, we don't know what she is here 
but something which is famine in nature will be thrown down okay so far the meaning is that she will be thrown down now <clears throat> let's go further to understand this more because next word will help to understand the next word starts with wow jim and ha and it has multiple meanings but when we make one noun as wajhun okay we are going to make wajhun this means face wajhun means face there are many other meanings but one face of a person is one wajhun also the, this is a body part and the body parts are feminine in nature okay so wajhun means face of a person which is feminine in nature it's a single face its plural is wujuhun if you make a plural wujuhun is the plural faces okay then you combine this with the word whom who means them now them are those people who will be coming with the evil deeds or bad deeds so first of all you combine these this means them and combining them their faces or faces of them when you combine putting an of it will become their faces and in arabic all we do we just change one dhamma here so by changing one page one dhamma it becomes <coughs> the meaning of of their faces or faces of them so now the meaning will be fakubbat will be thrown down because now we don't need to translate she wujuh hum their faces will be thrown down okay which means they will be thrown down on their faces these people who come with the evil deeds will be pushed into thrown down with their faces or upon their faces finnari okay so now it becomes very clear what will happen to these people the word is narun and when you put al so it becomes an naru is common word first of all an naru is the word an naru and then you put fi fi is a preposition harf jar in the fire and fi will change last letter tumma to a kasra so what is finnari in the fire now this is the fire of the jahannam fire of hell so their face they will be these people see entering someone into fire throwing down on the faces is a worse condition so they will be pushed face down on their faces in the fire once they are thrown down someone will ask them a question or it may be angels hal tujzauna so let's try to understand that word <clears throat> hal is uh, used to make a statement as a question mark okay if you are saying something was done and you want to make it a question was something done then you put hal before that okay hal the next word is a jim za and ya okay this means to pay back and the word we know is jaza jaza is a payment back so say so ja jim <coughs> za ya is to pay back to recompense multiple meanings of that okay when you put a ta in the beginning and pronounce taj ta brings the meaning of one person you okay so just simple grammar is faala faala means to do when you put a ta in the beginning it becomes you do first uh, second person you and singular so you do <laughs> and the pronunciation is taf alu so we are going to use this template on these three letters okay taf alu 
you do so we will just put these three letters and put the same harakat it will we will fix that first put taj za and you just leave it this way this means you pay back you do you pay back now if i make one change here make this as a page on dhamma it becomes passive voice so you put this thing here it becomes passive voice so meaning will be you are paid back here you pay back but passive will be you are or you have been paid back okay now put a vow to make it a plural and a noun okay so when you pronounce this you do not pronounce this ya yeah, this is just a sound letter so this become tuj zauna that's the word in the quran you have been paid back the meaning will be passive you have been paid back it's a plural hal tuj zauna allah is or someone is asking have you been paid back have you been recompensed which means whatever your evil deeds were have you been paid back as a punishment in the fire for your evil deeds <clears throat> then further explanation is made by saying illa ma kuntum ta'malun illa means accept but okay the word after that is a ma ma here means what or whatever ma has many meanings but here ma will be whatever now next word is kaf wow and noon kawana <coughs> the meaning is to be and then the other word is amala and meem lam and this means is to do so these are the roots that we are going to work next three words ma whatever illa means accept ka wow noon to be and ain meem lam is to do amal is common word now if we have three letters faala and we want to make you do okay so <clears throat> plural will be faal you combine these three fa al tum when you add this tum at the end it brings the meaning of you plural and past tense which means you did fa al tum tum brings the meaning of you plural and the past tense so this rule we are going to first apply on these three letters kaf waw and noon so we take that kaf waw and noon and you just add tum at the end just like we did the tum here okay now if you put the harakat kaf waw noon so so far it sounds like funny kawan tum but that's leave it there the meaning will be you were it's a past tense so the past tense of english word to be is you were in the second person so the meaning is that you were okay we'll keep this meaning there also we will try to fix this sound here it is kawan tum okay so what we do is that this a vowel is a weak letter we drop this the, the vowel there from there in the easy speech but we keep the harkat of the vowel which is pesh or o and we put the harkat here and drop the vowel to for easy tongue speech so what becomes kun tum meaning is still same you were that's the word in the quran kun tum means you were just keep it there okay now let's look at this word amala means to do 
If I put a ta in the beginning, like taf alo, you do. So ta a malo means you did or you do and put a vuna it becomes plural. Okay. So the meaning is ta a malu na when you combine them and you pronounce together. Ta a maluna means you and it's a present tense you do all of you do now in the arabic what we have happens that if you are talking that some people kuntum is a past tense and tamaluna is present tense okay kuntum you were and tamaluna you do so when you combine these this way the english translation will be you have been doing in the past it becomes a continuous a past tense and a present tense combined together meaning will be you have been doing or you had been doing in the worldly life so ma kuntum tamaluna what you had been doing in the worldly life you have come here with the sayyat, with the evil deeds. Have you been paid back? The question is being asked the people in the hellfire. Hal tuj zauna, have you been paid back? Illa except ma kuntum tamalun, what you had been doing in the worldly life. So and people's answer will be obviously that yes, they cannot deny there because they will admit what they have done. So that is a statement about the hereafter for the people to ponder that they should be avoiding the evil deeds in this worldly life so they don't have to face situation like that in the hereafter. So that's the end of this ayat. The next ayat is a command, a statement about command. So one thing I want to point out, the word is innama. This is important that we pronounce this word correctly. Innama. The meaning of this word is only. Okay? This noon and meme are next to each other. In the Quran, there are sometimes the words appear this way. <coughs> Inna ma. Written separately, and the meaning is that Inna means surely and ma means not, okay? They exactly same haraka, <clears throat> same pronunciation, but here it is one word. So don't give a break between that. Just quickly say inna ma. The meaning will be only. If you said this way, give a break in between this <clears throat> sound, then the meaning will be not surely. So don't say in, when you're reading this one, don't say in uh, ma, otherwise you will be pronouncing this way. And this is a big difference in the meaning because people have misused this to challenge the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu The Quran says, so O Prophet say, inna ma ana basharun, I'm only a man. Or inna ma ana rasul, I'm only a messenger. If you translate this way, the meaning will be, I am not a messenger, okay? So it is a very important thing. People who try to abuse the Quran have done this thing in the past. So pronounce correctly. Don't give a break here, but give a break here if it is written this way. Here in the Quran, it is written in Nama only. Okay, so that's focus on that. Then the word is Amara. Amara means to command, okay? Amr is command, but amara means to command someone, to order someone to do something, okay? So the word is fa'ala, means to do. If you put a ta at the end and pronounce fa'al tu, fa'al tu, this ta at the end brings the meaning of I. And past tense, fa'al tu, I did. Okay. 
Faalto I did. So if I put a ta at the end and pronounce a marto, this will be I commanded. Okay, means I did something, I commanded, I ordered. Okay, but if I change the first letter alif to a dhamma, it becomes passive voice. So, and and this will be omirto means I have been commanded. So, so that's how you change active to passive. I have been commanded. In nama amarto, I have only been commanded. What have I been commanded? What have I been ordered? The next words are defining that. First of all, abada. <clears throat> abada means to worship. Okay. And again, when you have three letters, fa, and, and lam, if you put an alif in the beginning, this becomes the grammar of I and present tense. Afalo. <clears throat> Afalo means I do. Okay, so we are going to apply that rule here, put an alif in the beginning. Okay, and in this case, middle letter carries a dhamma, so it will be a'abudu. A'abudu means I worship. Present tense, simple meaning is I worship or I will worship. Now we are going to use one word before that, that has certain characteristics. The word un. Un in the English meaning is that, but un does one more thing, okay? Un, when it is applying on a present tense like this one, it does two things. In Arabic, it changes this last letter, dhamma, to a fataha, and the meaning is changes to as a should. Okay. An a'abuda, that I should worship. I have been commanded, commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I should worship, or I should be worshipping, or I will be worshipping. So you bring that, those kind of meanings, by putting an in the beginning and changing last letter, <coughs> harakat from pesh to a zabar or to a dhamma. So the meaning so far is that I have been commanded that I should be worshipping. Worshipping who? Rabba. The word is Rabbun. Rabbun means Lord. Okay. So we will combine these, so start with the word Rabbun first. Rabbun means Lord. And the word combined with Hazihi. Hazihi means this. Okay, and this is Haza means this for a masculine. Hazihi means this thing, if you have something in front of you, and you want to point out to that, haza means this thing, if it's a masculine. But if that object is feminine, you would hazehi. Okay. So keep in mind that this, this, this is hazehi. And why is that? We'll look in after that. So we have rabbun and hazehi. So if you combine lord of this, then this Dhamma will change into, two will change into one to bring the half of the meaning. So it becomes Rabbo. But Rabbo is coming as a mafool of Aabudu. So when it comes an object of the mafool, this changes to a Fataha. So it becomes Aabudu Rabba Hazihi. But after that is the word Al Baladu. Balad means city. Okay, so, so the word is ba, lam, and dal, and the baladatun is the word for a feminine. Baladatun means a city, which is the last two le last letter with it. Tamarbuta means this is a feminine word. 
And that's the reason we are using feminine grammar here for hazi he. So when you put al before that, it becomes the city and vandama will go al baladatu. And then you combine this hazi he with this one, it will change to a kasra. So it becomes, all this combination will be rabba hazihil baladati. Lord of this city. An Abuda, that I should be worshipping. Rabba, the Lord of this city. And this city is Makkah. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet is commanded to say that I have been ordered, I have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I should be worshipping the Lord, the Rabb of this city. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further explains Allazi. Allazi means he, and this is pointing to Rabb. Allazi means Lord, pointing to its pronoun he, but this is pointing to Lord. Allazi, he is the one. Who is the one? Lord is the one. Allah is the one. What he has done? The root letters are Ha, Ra, and Mim. Harama. Three letters, so it belongs to group Fala, and this means to forbid. We know this word commonly, Hara, Haram, or Harama. If I put a Shadda on the middle letter and make it Fa'ala, this becomes Harama. Harama means to make sacred. Okay, so there's a basic difference. <clears throat> Masjidul Haram is not from this. Masjidul Haram is from this word. Harrama means to make something pure, to make something sacred. Okay, Harama means to forbid. Means don't eat this thing. This is haram for you. But Harrama has different. So this is the word Harrama. Harrama means he made <coughs> valuable, sacred something. And ha means it. Ha is a feminine word. It and it is pointing to the baldatun because baldatun was a feminine word. Allazi harramaha. He is the one. Allah, Rabb. He has made this city a sacred city. This town, the Makkah. Okay. Then further, walahu kullo shayin. Wow. Lam and who are three separate letters. Wa means and. And Lam means to or belongs to and who means him. So and to him or belongs to him. What belongs to him? The, again, there are two words. First word is Kullun. Kullun means everything or each. And the shayun, common words, means thing. Shayun is the word. Kullun and shayun. When you combine these two together by putting an af in between, mudaf, mudaf, ilay, what happens? The first word loses one dhamma, so it becomes kullu. Second word to the mass page change into two kasras shay in kullo shay in that's the word in the Quran. Walahu kullo shay in and everything belongs to him. He is the owner Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of everything. Then again the word is that wa umirto same word and I have been commanded. This time the word again is kaf wa noon. Kauna. Kauna means to be. Okay. So if you have fala and you put in an alif, it becomes the grammar of I do. Okay. This alif brings the grammar of I and present tense. So we're going to apply this here. Alif, kaf, wow, and noon. Okay. Sound here is... Af 
alu. Af alo means I do. So first apply the same grammar here. Ak wano. Ak wano means I am or I be or I become. Okay, present tense, first person. Now, sound it sounds funny like ak wano. So we try to adjust the sound for easy speech. What we do? The sukun on the calf we move on vowel. And the sound of the vowel is dhamma or pesh, we move it on calf. So now it becomes akuno, it's easy to pronounce. Akuno means I become. Now do the same thing. Put an before that, we just learned that, undo two things, unbring the meaning of that. And un also changes last letter to its zabar or fataha. So an akuna meaning will be I should become. Just like we just learned before that an aabuda. Now it becomes an akuna. That's the word in the Quran. Wa I have been commanded an akuna that I should be or I should become. Next two words are common, easy. The word is Muslimina. Min means among or from. So min is the word among. And the word is we know Muslimun. Muslimun means thus the one who submits. Aslama means to submit. Muslimun is a person who submits himself. This is the word we start. Now we make a plural by adding a vuna. So this will be muslimuna. Muslimuna means those people who submit. Okay, and obviously submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min is a harfijar. Harfijar or preposition, what it does, it looks at the next word which is plural and changes the sound of Wow into a sound of ya. Yeah. And to pronounce, we change this to kasra, so it becomes muslimina. Then muslimina means those who submit. Then you put al before that. Okay. It will become al muslimina. But when you re read them together, you combine noon with lam. Minal Muslimina. So you change this kasra in Tajweed to a Fataha. Minal Muslimina, when you stop, you don't pronounce Fata on the last letter, you pronounce Minal Muslimin. Anakuna, that I should be. Minal Muslimin, among those who have already submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have been commanded, Prophet is saying that. I have been commanded that I should be among those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that should be also the statement of anyone who wants to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are basically the simple uh, breakdown and meanings of the words. Very powerful ayat of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand the Quran and act upon it. Sadaqallahu